Hello everyone, and welcome back to the Fluctus channel. Navigating through oceans has always been a challenge. With the introduction of nuclear-powered submarines, seafaring evolved to the next level. As nuclear submarines could sail for a quarter century without refueling, the nature of deployments has undergone a dramatic change. A nuclear submarine stays underwater for months with more than a hundred submariners. When deployed, the submarine becomes a solitary sentinel, completely changing the lives of sailors on board. Starting from the USS Holland, the first commissioned submarine in the US Navy in 1900, to the latest nuclear-powered submarines, their role has become indispensable in modern naval warfare. A ballistic missile submarine can dive to depths close to 1,000 feet, and the pressure hull is mostly made out of high-strength steel and titanium to withstand the immense pressure. A nuclear-powered submarine receives power from a nuclear reactor that emits heat to generate steam for the turbines. Turbines drive the propeller, generators, and other accessories. The commissioning ceremony heralds the official entry of a submarine into active duty. Ship sponsors, high-ranking Navy officers, and public dignitaries participate in the commissioning event. The epitome of the ceremony is hoisting the commissioning pennant and manning the submarine with sailors. The commissioning pennant is a long streamer carrying national colors and stays as long as the vessel is commissioned. Although it seems exciting to work in a submarine, it can be mentally and physically draining. Usually, sailors stick to a 24-hour watch bill to align their duties with the natural circadian rhythm of humans. This vastly improves the vigilance and psychological well-being of submariners, ultimately leading to an improved quality of life. Open that fence. That fence open. Out of the many vital operations that keep the submarine safe, navigation tops the list. Unlike surface navigation, pinpointing the location of the submarine is a task of its own. Navigators rely on sonar, bottom contour charts, and the initial navigation system to determine the exact location and attitude of the ship. The control room serves as the nerve center, undertaking most of the vital operations, including navigation, communication, and target tracking. Unlike aircraft carriers and other surface vessels, a submarine does not have much to offer to keep its sailors entertained. Thus, the crew's mess and food become a crucial source of comfort for the crew on board. Culinary specialists prepare food around the clock to cover all the working shifts. Yeah. 
Usually, a submarine carries around 15,000 pounds of food, including fresh vegetables and fruits, canned foods, and frozen meat. Fresh foods are a precious commodity, and sailors have the privilege of consuming them for around two weeks only. We serve about 130 meals per day, and today you guys are here with us on Burger Day, also known as Field Day, so we have chocolate chip cookies for today. We've already been eating them, so that's how you know they're good. Submarines have the best food in the Navy. Don't let anyone tell you anything otherwise. As submarines operate in a world apart beneath the waves, managing the supplies is paramount. The supply management officer, or the CHOP, is the one who undertakes this arduous task of pleasing the sailors throughout the deployment. USS Ohio. I'm the supply officer, or what they call me is the chop on the boat. My favorite thing of being a chop is being able to make the crew happy. So the morale of the crew is very important. So if I have a crew that loves chicken nuggets, then I'm going to make sure I order a bunch of chicken nuggets. Basically, it's whatever I can do to make them happy um, because the job's tough. Apart from catering to food requirements, the supply officer is responsible for all the other supply management functions, including husbanding services while in port. This is a unique role that ensures the self-sustainment of the submarine during its protracted operations. In this self-sustaining ecosystem isolated from the world, submarines are equipped with medical facilities capable of addressing any medical emergency. Sailors get individual attention from a simple sick call to specific medical requirements. The hospital corpsman runs the medical room and seeks assistance from any emergency medical assistance team during onboard emergencies. Despite the confined and submerged environment, submarines manage to offer room for entertainment as well. With less wiggle room in submarines, Sailors manage to place stationary exercise machines such as bikes and treadmills or walk down the torpedo tubes to keep in shape. Beyond conventional operations, submarines participate in exercises such as ice exercise or ice X that push their limits, preparing them for the most unforgiving situations. The Ice X exercise helps submarines practice surfacing through ice and adapt to extremely cold environments where conventional navigation methods are ineffective. Unlike surfacing through water, surfacing through ice poses great challenges. To help submarines to surface, a group of experts conducts a field party to analyze the ice surface and to determine the right location for surfacing. They measure the thickness and stability of the ice layer using ice augers by drilling through the ice. With the suitable location selected for surfacing, the submarine ascends through the ice at an angle to minimize stress on the hull. 
Usually, the submarine has to punch a three to four foot thick ice layer to the surface. With the sail protruding through the ice, the field team should remove more ice chunks from the surface to clear the path towards the hatch using ice saws. Upon surfacing, sailors have the opportunity to set foot in the Arctic environment, offering a sense of accomplishment for their efforts. Executing a precise surfacing operation signals the operational capability within the Arctic region, which demonstrates their combat and tactical preparedness in unforgiving environments. With all the prowess gained from training and exercises, the true power of a submarine ultimately lies in its armaments. The armaments carried on board a submarine may consist of torpedoes, missiles, or mines, depending on the requirement. The U.S. Navy operates 71 submarines, including fast attack, ballistic missile, and guided missile submarines. All these categories carry both torpedoes and missiles, but with different types to serve the exact demands. When attacking enemy submarines, torpedoes become the go-to option due to their effectiveness against submerged targets. Close right surface! They are launched from torpedo tubes, which are cylindrical tubes that hold the torpedoes and open to the external environment during the launch. Due to their large size and explosive capability, loading torpedoes requires extensive care and planning. However, a torpedo tube can still be utilized to launch an encapsulated missile, such as the UGM-84 Harpoon. Unlike torpedoes, the missile does not travel underwater. It surfaces and splits open from the launch capsule to ignite and travel through the air. Launching a torpedo in icy conditions could inherit completely different outcomes. Thus, the U.S. Navy fires test Mark 48 torpedoes during the Ice X to evaluate their performance. They use test torpedoes fueled by auto fuel tube that does not carry a warhead. Using a reusable torpedo improves sustainability, and the benign fuel keeps the pristine environment in the Arctic region unharmed. From routine operations to exacting exercises such as Ice X, submariners undergo a strenuous lifestyle. The confined spaces narrow sleeping berths, and month-long deployments make the life of a submariner exceptionally demanding. When they are called upon for special missions that demand even more capability, they must push their limits further, adapting to extreme conditions with unwavering focus and resilience. That's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any of our new content. See you next time.